the master swordsman of Japanese history, Miyamoto Musashi, use a phrase in his work, The Book of Five Rings, he uses it over and over. Maybe it could be called the, the thesis of this work or the main idea he's trying to get across. And he refers to this concept as the spirit of the thing itself. And this concept has been in my consciousness quite a bit lately, relating to also this notion of building the ark. And I think as of today, as I'm recording this, there has been a change in the overall consciousness of the people that I have been, let's say, communicating with over the last year and a half. I'm seeing people moving from out of a state of denial about the end of the world and into further stages, or those who were out of a state of denial are moving even further. And so I wanted to talk about this concept and this idea of the end of the world or the end of an age in the context of this spirit of the thing itself and how that relates to this notion of building the ark. And hopefully this can inform you if you have been following this concept and wondering more about what you should be doing. We've spoken a little bit more in previous videos about that. Hopefully this will be able to inform you and to help. That's my sincere hope. The reason why this has come up as of late is because I have been teaching my Bitcoin Mystery School courses. And within that, that I've been doing since December, there's been hundreds now of people who have completed the course. So there's a community of hundreds of people in private groups that we have, and anybody who is a, a member, a student of the course, can have access to these groups. There's also now been spin-off groups of people who have just decided that they enjoy the community so much that they wanted to talk about specific things. And I have begun a secondary level of study in these courses that gets people closer to actually building some things. And hopefully we'll be able to grow this community with a particular spirit. And that brings me to this idea of the spirit of the thing itself. What Miyamoto Musashi is talking about is he's specifically talking about swordsmanship. He was a, a great swordsman, perhaps the greatest who has ever lived. He beat 60 men in one-on-one -on -one duels, sword fights, to the death. 60 men. So meaning you have to win 100%, right? It's to the death. And then he wrote this book called The Book of Five Rings. And one of the concepts that he talks about a main concept is this idea of the spirit of the thing itself. And he's talking about the spirit of swordsmanship, but it goes to anything in Japanese businessmen and soldiers and athletes. This is a book that is highly prized as a book of philosophy. The idea behind the spirit of the thing itself, he says, is that you must work and practice at something. And if you work and practice diligently, trying to truly understand the thing, to put in the labor and the practice and the time, then he says the spirit of the thing itself will reveal itself to you. It's a beautiful and brilliant concept. So the idea is that he learned sword fighting by actually going and fighting, by training hard, and that the spirit of sword fighting itself, the pattern the, the platonic form, the nature and character of sword fighting itself revealed itself to him and little by little as he went through. And the more it revealed, the farther he could go, the more he understood this revelation, this emergent revelation. And this has really been true for me as I have started building out this Bitcoin mystery school and have tried to be a good caretaker of the community and have tried to expand people's knowledge and expand what people were doing and help to guide people in the right direction. The idea to do this was very much revealed to me. People don't like this. There are plenty of people who don't like the story, but the story is, 
It was after morning prayers on the beach here in Saipan. And I was walking home and it hit me. You're going to teach this class. And exactly the way that I've been teaching it was just basically revealed to me. And I even thought to myself, this is crazy. What is this? But I was in this practice. I had started into this practice and I was getting revelations. I was getting things to write that, that ended up becoming my book, Render Unto Caesar. And so I was like, okay, I'm receiving this. Let's see. And lo and behold, many, many people have signed up. I think just about every month, if not every month, has been sold out. And then there have been private classes to do. And the community has grown and people have expressed that they have enjoyed being a part of this community and that it's given a lot to them. But what is the spirit underneath it? What is the spirit of the thing itself? It's very much part of the spirit of building the ark. And so what is the ark? The ark, as I said in a previous video, the ark is a container, it's a vessel, it's a means for the Holy Spirit, a pattern of life a sustainable pattern of behavior that can sustain life for a long time to move through space and time. So Noah's Ark, the Ark of the Covenant, the temple in Jerusalem, the Virgin Mary, these are arcs in scripture. This is the pattern repeating over and over the metaphor. And really, if you look at these arcs, what they're meant to do, where they're meant to carry the Holy Spirit, is between ages, from age to age. So here's the Holy Spirit in one age, and now we need to build an ark. So whether that's the flood, whether that's the Israelites moving the exodus from out of Egypt to try to settle in, in the promised land, whether that's the move to from the old world of Judaism into Christianity, whether that's the move from the people of Israel as a nomadic tribe into them as a nation. That's the representation of the temple as a static nation that is in a single place. It's this movement between two ages. And one of the most difficult things to be, may you live in interesting times as a curse, is someone who is living in generations that are in between ages. And I think that if you can't see now that we are in between ages, I don't know what to tell you. And the word age and the word world are the same age in the scriptures. Age and world. So saying the end of an age is the end of the world. Your world and your age are the same. And since the beginning of this, the beginning of the end, when it was very clear to me that it was the end, we're talking about when this all started, and you know what all I'm talking about, March and April, when it was two weeks to save grandma, I had put my family on a plane to this remote island in the middle of the Pacific, where, by the way, we haven't had any of the, uh, the physical pathogen but the mental pathogen has, because that travels through your phone, that has definitely reached this place. It's very interesting. And at that time, as I was making those moves, I was communicating to people in public. And at the time, as I was making those moves, people thought I was crazy. There's probably some people listening right now who, uh, who might be packing their bags soon. At the time, I said that the most important thing that you can do right now is to go from denial to acceptance. And what I was referencing was the five stages of Greece, uh, five stages of Greece, the five stages of grief developed by Elizabeth Kubler-Ross. And those are five stages of grief. So this is when someone dies. Something terrible happens. The end of something, that, particularly the end of someone's life. You go through five stages of grief. The first stage is denial, where you say, this is not happening. And we make all kinds of justifications and rationalizations in our mind. Anything that this is not happening. Just, it's not. The next stage is anger. 
We're angry that it happened. We're looking to lash out at someone. We're screaming. We're raging. Our emotions are going. We're no longer in denial. But now we're angry as though our anger could fix the situation. We're angry, lashing out. And then we go into bargaining. We try to make a deal, either with a person. Hey, man, but what if I just did... Think about relationships ending, right? Think about a breakup. We're not breaking up. We're not breaking up. That's denial. What are you doing? You're going to break up with me? How dare you break up with me? If you've ever had a bad breakup, you might go through all of these in just one, one conversation. How dare you break up with me? That's anger. That's rage. And then, well, hold on. I could do better. Seriously, why don't we just give it a try? Look, what do you need? Let's just... That's bargaining. And then, oh, it's over. Crying, tears, depression. I don't know what I'm going to do. I don't know how am I going to live without you. Depression. And then finally, acceptance. And if you've had a bad breakup in the past, and it was years and years and years ago, hopefully you've gotten to acceptance and you look back now and you're like, yeah, you know what? It was good or bad or whatever it was, but I'm not, you're not feeling anger over it. You're no longer in denial about it. You're not trying to bargain to get that person back. You're not depressed about it. Now that, that, you might hold on to it. You might hold on to the grief. You might never get through all of those phases and all the way to acceptance. But if you don't, you certainly can't be in a healthy relationship after that. And so what I was telling people from that time, and I've, I've still been telling people is, you're grieving for the end of an age. You're grieving for the end of the world as you knew it. But it's over. It's over. And there is a new age coming. But that new age can be better. Just like I've had terrible breakups in the past, but I'm in the most wonderful relationship with my wife that I have the most wonderful relationship I've ever had with anyone. Most fulfilling, most loving, most productive. All of those things. But I never would have been able to have a relationship with her had I not gotten over and come to acceptance about those breakups that I had in the past. If I was still pining for those other women or I was still depressed about it, how could I be in a healthy relationship with my wife? How could I find someone who was actually a, a wonderful partner and a match for me and a mother of my children? And this is the same thing, is that you are straddling two ages. Building the ark is about accepting the flood Think about Noah receiving. There's going to be a flood. It's going to end everything. If he's in denial, he doesn't build the ark. He dies and his family dies. Right? If he just says, it's not happening, then even the rain. Even the rain. The, the flood waters for, for us right now are waist high. <laughs> waist high. And I would say the vast majority of, of people who are, let's say, of the mind that I am in terms of how they would like to see the world, they are still in denial. They have not even moved past that. Now, the people on the other side, the Church of Woke, they've accepted this for years. For years, they have said, we're in a new world, man. This is a whole new world. This is a new world that we've accepted for them. This is par for the course. We're, this is progress. We're, we, they've been in that new world. They've come to acceptance of this. This is a world that they want. They're pushing toward it. They wanted the old world to end a long time ago. They were not happy with that world. They pushed for it to end. They're pushing for it, for it to continue to end. But it's, it's ended. We're just in the transition. The floodwaters are rising. And what if he had tried to bargain with God? What if, what if Noah had sat there and said, well, but what if? 
You know, what if I was just a better person? What if I went and told them? What if I showed them some charts and graphs about the things that they've been doing wrong? That wouldn't have worked either. And still, he wouldn't have built the ark. Anger certainly wouldn't have done anything about it. And then what? Depression and sit around, mope around, still not building the ark. So the key is to get to acceptance as quickly as possible. Part of getting to acceptance in this case is to actually envision the world that you would like to see moving through this. It's not about fixing the old problems. In the same way that the wokes have reinvented the world in the image that they would like to see, you also have the opportunity to be a part of what comes in the new age. You don't have to hand it over to them. And quite frankly, I don't believe that that spirit that they are pushing is even sustainable. It might make it a little ways through the transition, but it's not a powerful spirit. It's shown that over the years, over the centuries, over previous ages. And so what is that spirit? You have to look at the spirit of the thing itself. You have to look at what is emerging. You have to see that there is a spirit pushing that agenda. There is a spirit building that world. They don't even, there's no cabal of people. They're doing it on their own. The momentum is on its own. It's a spirit. It's a pattern. They're possessed by it and they're falling into it. And so if you want to know where you need to go, how you need to build the ark, you need to find the spirit of the thing itself. The spirit of the thing that is the way of life. That's what you need to find. Because only then will you know how to build the ark. Only then will you receive instructions on how to build the ark. And so what is that spirit? Where is the spirit of the thing itself? You've got to be a part of communities. You've got to reach out to people who are embodying that spirit. And it's the spirit of life. It will look like a spirit of liberty, not license, liberty. Of people who are not put into chains, of people who are given the space to be inspired. Inspiration, the spirit enters them. But you're around people who are only seeking out a spirit of life, a holy spirit to enter them. Those may not necessarily be religious people, but those things that we call religions have proven themselves to be systems whereby people can be inspired. They've proven themselves that, that they address a particular pattern, a particular spirit, and people who live in that way are filled with that pattern, are filled with that spirit. So therefore, the things that they build manifest that, just like the wokes are filled with the spirit of death. And you see that everything they do manifests death. Death of people, death of economies, death of relationships, death of entire systems, the death of languages, the death of meaning, the death of logic, of reason, of children, of harmony between people. The death of all of the things that have been held sacred by human beings forever. They would prefer that you don't build the ark. But if you build the ark and you carry it into the next age, I'm not talking about solving the problems that they have created. I'm not talking about fixing things. I'm not talking about, oh, we can change the government. We can go and we can uh, elect some people and we can roll these laws back. Forget about rolling laws back. I'm talking about an entirely new age. That's what you're building the arc toward where that doesn't even matter. 
But you can't do that unless you come to acceptance. All of the tools are there. All of the information is in front of your face. But as long as you are living in denial, you're looking at the boat that they've built for themselves. And the flood water is rising and you're standing in it. And they will watch with glee as you drown. And if you try to climb up onto that boat, they will kick you down into the water so that they can watch you drown and laugh and laugh. It doesn't have to be that. It doesn't have to be that. Embrace the spirit of life. Build the ark. Get with people who are filled with that spirit. And you can move into something so much better than what you left behind. You can move into something that will make you feel silly for grieving for what you left behind. Build the ark.